Good evening and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. In this video I just wanted to pretty much finalise where we were going with the VR content. We're going to go back to the motion controller one more time and I just wanted to add some simple interactivity function. To begin this one, just go straight into the project settings and we can add the input mappings again like we did with the teleport. We're going to need two of these if you wanted both hands to be interactive. So we'll create one called interact L. Or actually just because of the order we did the previous ones we'll call this one interact r and then interact l and again like we did previously i'm just going to get the motion controller and i think i'll use the right and left trigger this time so um, we'll use the motion controller r trigger and the motion controller left trigger so we can just type trigger and we'll get the motion controller left trigger for that one so that is the input ready to go in the motion controller blueprint if we go here uh, what I want to do is the motion controller itself comes with a block all function, which is fine. We can leave that as it is. I think I'm going to use the hand mesh for this one, and I'm going to set this to have a collision type of overlap all. So we'll change that from the default block. And then we can use this and we'll say that when we begin and end an overlap event, so we can just add these down here, we're just going to do a quick test. So when we begin an overlap, we'll cast to, so cast to bp underscore uh, interactive base so we'll see if this is of the interactive type we'll just move this down a bit and if it is then we'll promote this to a variable so all of this is probably seeming fairly familiar by now we're going to promote this and this will be our reference for the overlapped interactive object that's pretty much what it is so that's fine and then when we end the overlap so we can do this pretty much when when we have when we end overlapping anything uh, we will just set this back to be nothing. So we then don't have a reference for the overlapped object. Now with that done, we can create a new function. So we'll add a new function here and we'll just call this one interact, same as we've called them previously. And what we'll do is our test. So we'll pull off of the overlapped interactive object, see if it's valid. And if it is, then we'll do what we've done previously and we will activate, I believe was the function we had there. So we'll activate that object only if it's valid. We'll move this back up here, plug that into the interact function, and that is pretty much this class ready to go again. So everything that we need inside of the motion controller is done, which means we can move back over to the player pawn. So we'll go to the BP player base. And like we've done previously, this is going to be our teleport function. So we'll comment this just so we know. And below the teleport functions, we'll add our interactive calls. So we had the interact right, so interact R, and interact l so these are our action inputs that we've uh, already specified in the project settings just move these up and really we don't need to do any checks or anything here the only checks that we need to do are going to be inside of the motion controllers anyway so for the right we can just call the interact button and really you can probably see that the way that we've done this it's either going to work or it's going to fail and there shouldn't be any problems or reference issues and we're going to do the same thing again for the left controller so interact so if we just follow through what this is doing, because that probably went a bit fast now that I look back on it, um, we're going to come in. If one of these buttons are pressed for the right or the left controller, we're going to call the function inside of that controller. If we have an overlapped object, so an object is close enough for us to interact with, if that's valid, we're going to activate it. If not, then, we're not, then we won't do anything. And remember, the activate function is the one which is held in the base class, and then each child class of the interactive object will have its own activate functionality so we could potentially teleport onto these while stood on them which is going to be a bit weird but that's fine and it means that if we're stood close enough to the cube we can grab it and turn it on the way this is normally used is very similar uh, types of things is you'll see in the demonstration project for example provided by epic if you get close to one of the phys physics objects uh, it pretty much does the same thing but all the activate function will do is it will turn on the physics simulation and then it will attach the component to the hand and uh, as soon as you let go it will detach it from the hand and let it roll around with the physics still on so you can set up really simple things like that but because we've done the attach to component and stuff before i'm not going to reshow that but i did want to show how to get some interactivity in place with the controller as well so again i always like to test these things and show you guys on the video so i'll just pause this get the oculus plugged back in one more time and then run through that with you okay so headsets all plugged in again don't forget if you're enjoying all of this stuff to subscribe to the channel really helpful and leave a like and share the video around if you have enjoyed this or find it useful but with that said i'm going to press play we'll be in the place 
and get the hands. I'm just inside of the binding box, so this is going to be a little bit awkward. But if I teleport over to the box and touch that, uh, one thing I probably want to do is I've also got the gaze focused. So I should have turned that off, but now if I look away and press that, you can see I'm not actually looking at it, but I still have control of the box. Now just to make that a bit clearer, um, I'm going to go back in and I'll just disable that for now. So we've got our player base. We should have a branch at the beginning. Um, maybe I didn't I didn't set that up on a, a uh, boolean, did I? So what we'll do is just need to go to the event graph. Uh, this is why it's always handy to put a branch in front of things like this, because I could have just toggled a boolean, but instead I'll come down to the event tick, I'll disconnect that, and again, <laughs> Learning example there for you is just for debugging and things, it's, it's often quite handy to set up a branch with a uh, boolean that you can declare somewhere. But for this time, we'll turn that off and we'll come back in. Try that again. So now if I look at the interactive objects, we don't see anything. If I teleport over to them, then it is definitely the motion controller, which is controlling that. And then if I do it with the other hand, I have control over that with both of the hands. Uh, again, it kind of lost sync there, that was working, it's just that the sensor didn't find the hand anymore. So we've got the teleport functions. Looking at it now, I'm in the floor, somehow I am sat down where I probably should be stood up, and I haven't set the height of the system up properly because I just didn't want to. <laughs> so um, that is pretty much everything in VR that I've been asked to cover. Hopefully to the people that have sent those messages asking how to do some of the really simple things, just to allow you to get into the more complex stuff. Hopefully that's proven useful. Uh, you can probably tell I'm not the hugest supporter of VR, so it's unlikely that I'll do any of this just for fun, unless there's some other things that you guys want to see. I have had a fair amount of experience in VR, so if there's anything you're really stuck on, I'll definitely give it a go if I've looked at it before. But um, that's probably all I want to cover for VR at the moment. For future videos though, I've got some really cool stuff planned for AR, really interested in looking at what's possible with augmented reality. Just need to get my hands on a device which supports it. Uh, as soon as I have that, there's some stuff I want to cover there. But I will leave that video here for now. As always, I hope that you found this useful, and like I mentioned, if you have, please do leave a like and share the video around, that really does help. To be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on your channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.